Well, hello. I'm Andy Beck, a choral composer and editor for Alfred Music. Thank you for joining me on this, the start of a brand new school year. Speaking of starts, how do you start your choral rehearsals? What kicks off and sets the tone for the beautiful music to come? I hope you're spending a good amount of time on quality warm-ups that will teach your singers basic techniques that they need to perform the repertoire. I think of all the band and orchestra teachers out there who spend a great deal of time teaching students how to physically play their instrument, the pedagogy behind, the fingering, the breathing, the posture, all of those things. And I wanna take a, a lesson from their book and teach my own singers how to play this very difficult instrument that you don't physically put your hands on, but that you do have great pedagogy and technique in order to get the best of. So here are some warm-up exercises designed to help you bring out the very best in your singers. One last thought, keep in mind the fact that I think probably very few of your students, if any, have private voice lessons. If they do, that's amazing. They're your leaders. I love that. If they don't, and for those in your room who don't take privately, you have this great opportunity to give them the basics of really good technique, and you do that during your warm-up. Let's get started. Here's a warm-up exercise called How to Sing. It's a great way to start off any choral rehearsal because it instantly engages with something very, very musical. By the way, something in parentheses, I always like to start rehearsal precisely on time. As soon as the bell rings, everybody knows they are to be in place and we're ready to start with music. Music before we even talk about anything. Here's how the exercise goes and it's really based on some great open space required to do the ow oh, diphthong. It's got a few ow oh words in it. Sound the music now, rounding every vowel, proudly learning how, how to sing. I already threw in a technique idea into the lyric here because vowels are critical to good singing. So we're already hinting about some of this stuff, but I like this exercise because you don't have to talk about too much to get it done. You just start singing. Here's what it sounds like. Sound the music now, rounding every vowel, proudly learning how, how to sing. Check it out. Here's a warm-up exercise I call the oval. And the oval refers to two things. First, the shape of the mouth on the outside. And secondly, the space required on the inside of the mouth. Those two things kind of work together to form very good vowels and tone quality in singers. Now, here's the lyric. Tall and round shape the space oval in the mouth and an oval on the face. There are certain ways where you can really encourage students to get these ovals. First of all, everybody's got a cell phone nearby. Have them turn on the selfie camera and really look at the shape of their mouth as they're singing. We always want that north to south tall shape. That's the oval, never the corners pulling back, no matter what the vowel sound is. Now, how about really analyzing the uh, space inside? Well, here's one that requires certainly some hand sanitizer and your own hand, but I sometimes take the thumb and I'm gonna put it inside my mouth, the roof of the mouth, just behind those top teeth and just press my thumbprint in there. I leave a little indentation, which I can still sort of feel. And that reminds me that that top of the cathedral's dome 
is really a nice oval space to give me a choral tone. I've heard the analogy that we want to sing with a choral, a cathedral dome, rather than a church steeple, which makes it kind of pointy in there. Give me the dome sound for that beautiful choral sound. Here's the oval. The lyrics for a singer are gold, and for your audience, it's what they want to understand and hear. That's why it's important that we carefully pronounce all the words. The concept is enunciate, and it's also the name of this exercise. Now, here are the words to this one. Enunciate the consonants, the consonants, the consonants. Enunciate the consonants. The consonants are great. Now, a couple things. Say the word consonants and see if you can catch that C in the hand. Consonants. You feel a little puff of air? Consonants. That's really what it's about. That little puff of air is really letting them be crisp and heard at a distance. Um, now, let's talk about the final T. Sometimes when I want to be sure that students are giving it a little percussive T, I'll say point to it enunciate the consonants. I feel that little k right there. Now, how about the t, the T-S? An S sometimes can have too much sibilance and drag on consonants, and we don't want to hear that in our wrists. We want a crisp t. And so I think about dropping, this is mirroring my mouth, t, t. If I Open that little space, basically getting the tongue away from the tip of the teeth. Consonants, I can no longer s Your tongue has to be up to do that sibilance. So, lots of things to think about as you teach. Enunciate the consonants. Enunciate the consonants. And the last thing, the consonants are great. Enunciate. The consonants, the consonants, the consonants, enunciate the consonants, the consonants are great. Enunciate the consonants, the consonants, the consonants, enunciate the consonants. Always include something fun in your vocal warm-ups. A little laughter sets a great tone for rehearsal. Here's a tongue twister. Do you know the words a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup? My exercise allows you first to say it at that tempo, and then the second time through it's fast, a proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup. Now, I have been practicing to be able to spit it out like that. When I would teach this, First say it slow, and then gradually work up to tempo. Pitch-wise, it would also be a great uh, sight singing exercise because here are the pitches. Do, mi, re, fa, mi, so, fa, la, so, fa, mi, fa, so. And the second one is so, fa, mi, re, do, ti, do. The whole thing. A proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup. A proper cup of coffee in a copper coffee cup. Have fun! There is no good singing without great breath. Not only breath that is expelled to create tone, but breath that is inhaled to give you the fuel you need. You know, you can't drive in a drag race without a full tank of gas. 
this exercise is all about that. It's called the inner tube expands. I imagine wearing an inner tube low on my torso, kind of around where we talk about expanding. Sometimes we talk about expanding the tummy or down in the diaphragm. That's not technically correct, but it does put our minds in the right frame of mind for taking a good, get good breath. That's where that inner tube is, down low on the torso. And as you take a very, very healthy inhalation, you will expand not only in the front, but also in the sides and even in the back. Think of the rib cage opening up to receive air side, side, front, and back. That's gonna give you the fullest breath. Here's a test for the back. Put your two thumbs together at the base of the spine in the back. My thumbs are touching. When I inhale and my rib, whoa, look at that. Those thumbs pulled right apart because I was holding onto the rib cage and I felt the whole thing open and that gave me a full tank, which means I can sing maybe a longer phrase and have better breath control during that while I am singing that phrase. Another thing about this inner tube expanding is you want it to be absolutely silent when you're inhaling. So my example there was not perfect. I was making it audible so you could hear it, but the best breath is created by opening up and allowing air to naturally flow in. Think of this, a paper bag flattened. There's zero air in there. You've smushed all the air out. All you need to do to get air inside is open it and the air flows directly in. That's what air does. It just goes to where there's space. So rather than thinking of like vacuuming in sound, just think about opening up the space, the space down here at the inner tube, it expands and the sound flows in. The exercise goes like this, and I get four places to take a good breath. The tummy and the sides, alas and alack, the inner tube expands, even in the back. As soon as that final consonant is on from the last phrase, I make the space, the air flows in, the inner tube expands. The tummy and the sides, Alas and the lack, the inner tube expands, even in the back. When we sing, we are artists, and we should be encouraged to use all the colors and light and darkness and emotion that we can conjure from inside. You know, many times we get to this stage of the game at the end of a learning process on a piece of repertoire. It's almost concert time and we start to talk about like, oh, give it meaning, have a facial expression. What are you trying to say? But when you think about it, why shouldn't we rehearse this as part of our warm up routine in the first 10 minutes of our rehearsal? This idea of, and here's the lyric, at the heart of the art is expression, emotional and musical, Yes, at the heart of the art is expression, so sing from the heart. Connecting our emotions to our voices is what it's all about. And it absolutely separates the rough sketches from the fine finished canvases. At the heart of the art is expression. The term bel canto comes from 18th century opera, but it doesn't only speak to opera singing. Bel canto, which means beautiful singing, is a great basic concept about what is needed to sing in any, any genre of music. It's all the things that contribute to freedom of the voice, which allows you to really sing expressively. So it starts with breath and vowels and tone quality and lyrical abilities and singing legato and all of those really, really foundational skills. All the things you're doing in your normal warm-up process. So this exercise called bel canto is a great way to set the tone for what's expected in the singing or to review all the concepts we've been working on so far at this rehearsal. Here's what it sounds like. Bel canto, bel canto, what a lovely sound. 
Bel canto, bel canto, lyrical and round. Beautiful singing. Well, there you have it, seven, I hope, brand new to you exercises to use at the start of the school year this year. You know, that first 10 minutes of rehearsal is so critical. That time isn't taking away from repertoire, but only adding to it, because as your students begin to master the vocal technique and create beautiful sounds, the repertoire is going to sound even, even better. Now, if you want to know more about these seven exercises or more, do check out the newest addition to the Vocalize series, my Vocalize 2. It's the bright pink and orange, where there are 36 additional exercises teaching you various techniques. Anything from, well, posture, relaxation, vowels, breath support, tone quality, to resonance and diction and intonation and range builders, expression, some miscellaneous skills in there like watching the conductor and how to create syllabic stress as well as some harmony exercises at the end of the book. I hope you will enjoy singing and teaching these as much as I enjoy sharing them and I wish you the very very best year filled with lots of songs that sound so beautiful because you've taught your kids the core technique to beautiful singing. Thank you for tuning in.